when I started taking uh, estrogen, it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. I mean, oh my God. I mean, within days, like my brain finally lit up. It was just magical. That's when the transition began. I've changed completely. My brain chemistry is just so different than it was. My blood chemistry is different. My hemoglobin count is different. My red blood cell, my white blood cell count, they're all different. You are not that person anymore. And so I got access to medical journals. I wasn't used to, I'm a geologist, oceanographer, so I wasn't used to reading medical articles. I literally read all the, all the key articles and I made my decisions based on the science. I made my decisions on how long I wanted to live. You're on this voyage all on your own. In my case, I did not want the decision to um, interfere with the leadership roles that I had. I didn't want me to become the topic. But when you're transgender, either female to male or male to female, or gender non-conforming, or non-binary, queer, uh, gender queer, you express it. You may identify in your head, but you've decided, no, you're going to not only identify in your head, you're going to show the world. So I was demonstrating it. I was, I changed my clothes. I changed other things. I would sometimes put uh, hair extensions that were a different color in my hair. And I never hit any of that. Um, but I wasn't out saying, oh, look at that. You know, um, so, and I changed my name. I changed my name legally because I wanted a different name. I, I didn't want James. I'm almost, I'm so non-male now that I, I don't want things that were associated with that person. You know, this James Savitsky, I like him a lot. No, I like him. I mean, he was a very interesting person, uh, a great person. Uh, I like him. I think that uh, his behavior, his actions, and what he was able to accomplish was good. I'm not that person. Um, so the things that James accomplished, uh, they are not the things that you accomplished scientifically. In the well, I mean, I is scientific science is a little different in the sense that. I wrote those papers and I can defend those papers. But those papers were written by somebody who had a lot of male energy. I don't have that male energy. Uh, I still write papers, but I don't have that same kind of energy that James would have brought to it. And maybe my papers now are better, I don't know, but they're different anyways. Uh, I think the male mind is Having experienced both, I'm one of those very few people who had both minds in my head. You're, you're, you can be really single focused as a male, in a male brain, and you tend to be, uh, see the big picture in a, you know, in a female brain. And that's where I am these days, looking at the big picture. So I like it. I, I do think that the success that I had at the beginning and as a male person that was made more successful because we live in a male oriented society and in the geosciences that's extremely male oriented do you know other uh, gender queers in the geological community yeah of course i do i i know actually quite a number we live in a country now where we have a president and a political party the gop who have targeted transgenders to discriminate against they don't just discriminate it and then pretend they're not i mean they do that with all sorts of groups of people but they actually say, no, 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 we are actively discriminating against transgenders. And 82% of the people who are in that community considered suicide. 
people should just let people be who they are. I mean, how am I, as a gender queer non-binary person, going to hurt you or anyone else? I just can't. I can't hurt them. Straight people need to do what they just recently have done with Black Lives Matter. Hopefully, if you were a normal, caring human being, you would have taken the protest moment and you would have done some research. And so this new education has resulted in these protest movements where now you're having white members of society who, who didn't even know that they were prejudiced start to recognize their own prejudice. But people just don't have the strength or the society support to allow them to explore what gender is, what gender identity is, what gender expression is, how that differs from uh, sexual orientation and biological sex. Those are all really big topics. If I was to give a test to most people, straight people, what we call cisgender people, they would fail the test. So that's one thing you can do. You just don't be so ignorant. And the second thing you can do besides not being ignorant is being curious. Uh, you know, be curious, talk, ask questions. You're a very good example because you've chosen to interview me, not for my science, but for, um, you know, this topic because you know that I'm totally out there. The third thing that they can do is decide themselves what diversity truly is and what is the meaning of diversity. And just like if you've heard in the Black Lives Matter movement about microaggression and things like that where people aren't even really aware of their being stupid and hurtful and, and aggressive. And so that if you see a, a, a colleague who's showing these tendencies, be brave. If it's your boss who's showing these tendencies, you have to be especially brave to say, you know, just be smart about how you do it. Say to your boss, you know, that I don't think that was the wisest thing to say. You know, you may have hurt that person. You know, it made me feel uncomfortable. Uh, you may want to talk to them. But give them some courage to, uh, to change their behavior without belittling them. And, and so I think those three things, if you did those three things, I think, um, yeah, we'd be a better world than we are now.